No, it's actually not. It's, it's first full and it's her first cover. Uh, first first cameo technically is uh, Conan 23. But this has got a fantastic Barry Winter Smith cover. And actually, out of the two, this one has more market demand as far as collectability. Nice. I've never heard of that. Yeah. So you're picking these up? Yep. Uh, yeah, because of the uh, new Disney Plus One Division show with uh, Vision and the Scarlet Witch, uh, this is their team up books, uh, 12 issue limited series, number one issue. And then the other one, I think, is a four issue limited series picked up issues one, two, three, and four. Very good pickups, all in very high grade, probably nine, near mint, minus is near mints. Nice. Yeah, the first uh, Toronto Comic Book Show of 2020, and a um, uh, fantastic show, if I do say so. Did you, uh, did you guys like that footage? Yeah, it was great footage, man. Love uh, the footage. Mm -hmm. Wish I could have been there. Yeah, I, I, I love. I, 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 did, I don't take as much footage at that show as I, I used to, but I mean, it, at the, at the end of the day, it all tends to kind of be the same after a while. So I did just did a bit. Um, as, Usually as it, we get people milling around shots. I mean, yeah. I think we get some shots of me digging through some bins, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But it's and, a, yeah, it's a show that goes from strength to strength. I for mean, sure. I want to comment, like, I mean, the facilities are nicer. And, like, one of the things is you're not going to be get gouged on if you want, like, a bottle of water and, yeah. like, pizza at a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. there. So, like, I mean, they got a kind of commissary at the beginning. Yeah. And, I mean, every every time we go, we see it seems more people. And it, mm -hmm. it's one of those, like, the, the little one-day pop-up show that could. Yeah. I mean, it, it just seems goes, goes from strength mm -hmm. to strength. It's a great show. Yeah. It's good seeing Chris Reynolds again. Hey, yeah, good seeing uh, one of our viewers, Chris. Uh, nice pump bumping into him. Uh, yeah. yeah, cool. A uh, lot of wheeling and dealing, a lot of buying. Um, mm -hmm. Got some good books. Good seeing Phil there from um, Planet, Planet Hobby. Hobby. Yeah. Always good seeing our good pal Phil from high school. Yeah, he, I mean, he had he's been some in the great books. For, great books mm -hmm. for a long time, and yeah, he's got a great store, Planet mm -hmm. Hobby. Yeah, uh, overall, uh, good, good, good con. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's not waste some more time. Let's get started here. So, uh, as usual, we're going to start with the new book segment. And, Jose, you're going to start it off. And What are you showing us, two books? Yeah, a couple of books. Uh, so, this is the Toronto Comic Book Show. It's the con segment for new book feature. We'll mm -hmm. start off with this first one, which is Angela Asgard's Assassin. Mm -hmm. Issue number one from February of 2015. Yeah, this is a book I was uh, particularly on the lookout for, hoping I'd find it. And I did pick it up. One of the smaller dealers had it in one of their new box bins. Um, Reason of interest, uh, Marvel boss Kevin Feige has kind of lit a fire under this issue when he said that a transgender character was being incorporated into an MCU film that is currently in development. Mm -hmm. Now, speculators are assuming that Feige's comments refer to the movie Thor, uh, Love and Thunder. Uh, Angela, if people don't know, first appeared in uh, Spawn issue number nine, a, a book we discussed in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, pick, I picked it up, uh, I believe, from the guys at Hagenland. I think it was at a Fan Days December Con show kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's a book that's got a little bit of heat, uh, first appearance. Uh, yeah. Um, but this one, like, uh, you know. I think the thing to say about that is uh, that I want to mention, I mean, the character got into a fight between the two kind of creators or co-creators, Gaiman and, and McFarlane, and it went to a lawsuit. Uh, long story short, uh, Gaiman ended up getting the rights to the character, which he promptly sold off to Marvel. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, in the comics, Angela, of course, is a daughter of Odin, uh, which makes her, of course, the sister of the God of Thunder himself. Now, in the pages of this book, Angela Asgard's Assassin, it's revealed that Angela is in a romantic relationship with Sarah, who many are assuming is the most likely character Faye alluded to in his comments. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sarah, like Angela, is from the 10th realm, aka heaven. 
Uh, Sarah is one of the anchorites. Yeah, a race of wingless male angels, though she identifies as female. Uh, she's widely considered the most prominent transgender character in Marvel Comics, which is why many speculators are buying copies of and driving up the prices for her first appearance in this issue right here. Back in 2018, uh, I checked, there was only one recorded sale of a 9.8 standard copy of this book and it sold for a very underwhelming $28 US. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, there is one variant, there's a Quesada variant of this issue. Um, now last year in 2019, I think there were seven copies that traded hands online and they averaged about 40 bucks US. Now, so far this year, there have been no sales under $93 US and since January the 5th, it hasn't dropped below $125 US with a high sale of $160, giving it a fair market value of roughly $133 US. And that's just strictly based on the rumor that Fig was referring to the character of Sarah. Wow. Now, bottom line, there's no telling exactly where Fig is going with his comments. And that leaves much to the imagination regardless the rumors very much lean towards Sarah being the first transgender character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, Stephanie Hahn's cover work here is powerful, colorful, and just lovely. Her understanding of line and flow are almost unmatched, and it really shows off on this wonderful cover. For sure. Picked up for 15 bucks Canadian. What's that, 11 bucks and change uh, US? I think it probably would slab at a 9.8 if I wanted to spend the money. Yeah. And seeing with what pans out from that from the movie, it would be one of the books I would consider for a more modern book yeah, as just far gotta as wait a little, slab yeah. from the deck. Just Nothing wait wrong with a while that. and mm -hmm. see what happens. Exactly. Wait things yeah. still shake out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and the second, What do you got under there? The second book in our second uh, book on the oh, new book yeah, feature, yeah. of course, is a book I've been on the lookout for a while but haven't picked up because of the movie. This, of course, is... Black Canary Oracle Birds of Prey one shot number one from June of 1996 and mm -hmm. it has the first appearance of course of the Birds of Prey. Yep. Now it's recognized by most as the first Birds of Prey story with Black Canary and Oracle. Now just in case you're not sure who Oracle is, she's Barbara Gordon post being shot in the back by the Joker causing her to be paralyzed. Now during this time she was able to turn into a supercomputer hacker, but of course she dons the Batgirl cape on and off before Cassandra Kane takes up the mantle. Yeah. Now, currently this book at a 9.8 grade is going for about on average $240 US, but lower grade uh, copies of course can still be found for a good price. I would say you could find it in mid to high grade rock copies for about $40 to $50 US, graded a little bit more 75 80 90 dollars us especially when we start hitting the mid nines now of course this used to be a book that you could find in dollar bins a couple of years ago sure the dollar bins have since been picked clean and even if you're lucky i think to find a copy in the dollar bin you know they're not the ideal storage for raw 9.2 9.8 copies the boxes i find are typically either overstuffed or underfilled many times there's no bag and board and they've been thumbed through with complete disregard by so many filthy hands. Well, it's really a wonder why anyone bothers. Mm -hmm. Now, bottom line, I still love it though. And I dig whenever I get an opportunity. Thrill of the hunt and all that jazz. That said, the CG census, CGC census has shows only about 150 graded copies. And of that, 54 are 9.8. That white cover and years of potential neglect and bargain bins from its 1996 release will make it somewhat difficult to find more 9.8s without some help. Yeah, yeah. Now, this book, of course, had some heat a few months ago when the Birds of Prey trailer dropped, but of course that since faded pretty quickly because of the poor box office results of the movie. Yeah, it did kind of, nah. <laughs> I'll wait in judgment until we finally see it for ourselves. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah for sure, all right, all right. All okay, right. <laughs> I picked it up for 30 bucks Canadian, which with current exchange rates is about $21 US. The latest 49th Overstreet price breaks for this book are uh, 16, 23, and 30 dollars US in the eight, nine, and nine point split, 9.2 splits. And I checked online, and slabs are generally dropping for 
90, 110, and 115 UATs for 9, 9.2, and 9.4 copies. That's pretty nice. good for, you know, a, a newer, well, what I consider a newer book. You're getting over $100 for a slab? I, and uh, I guess not great slab. Thing, to start off the show, I guess mm -hmm. two more modern books that I got for a very small amount of price that potentially, if I should slab them, I could make some very good for profit sure. on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Great start, Jose. Thanks for bringing those in. Hoy, hoy. Okay, next one is mine. I'm not going to be as long-winded as Jose, that's for sure. And unlike Jose, I, I tend to be really lately just a real bargain hunter, looking for the cheapest books I can find, as long as the books have some significance, and this one certainly does. It's uh, obviously Thor number 300 from October 1980, and it's the first appearance of the uh, God's Heads or the uh, Council Elite. Um, again, not a terribly expensive book. Even in the high grade, it's only going to cost you, you know, 20 bucks, maybe 25 at most. Um, but again, first appearance of, of a lot of characters, so you find this in high grade in, in a $5 bin, pick them up, if you find a bunch, pick them all up, throw them in the back of your closet and wait 10 years, I'm sure um, it'll be worth your while. Now this isn't a high grade, I would say this is more like a fine, maybe a VF, who, who knows, but it's definitely not high grade. It's more like a VF copy, I, mean, yeah. I agree it's with you. It's got that one little tick and yeah. that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but it's, again, I bought, I paid three bucks for it. It's a black cover, three I mean, bucks. it's a strong Beautiful. cover, but I really, I am really having a hard problem accepting this cover with that huge Win, uh, Toys R Us banner kind of thing on it. Well, it really does mar the eye. During the early the 80s, book. they all had this. Marvel had this slapped I across know, almost every Marvel one of them. Marvel was yeah. having yeah. a tough time before Star Wars yeah. saved them, and they were really really kind of like like a racing sports car team or like a, 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 a athlete. They slap some, they slap some advertiser stuff on it, create some extra trying revenue. Trying to make some yeah. extra ducats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And of course, it's a 300 issue. Again, nothing other than that, but my cheapy pickup, and I'm happy with it. Hey, how many, how many titles, man, run to 300 issues? Purple cover, Spectre cover, yeah, early nice. Silver Age. Adam, you always gotta love the Adam. 125. And nobody does, but I do. Yeah. Ah, nice early Silver Age showcase. Uh, Aquaman, I have this copy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, giant size. These are all very high grade books, eh? Which is. Uh, yeah, very high. Why the prices are. High end stuff here. Look that's at that cover. Wow. That's for sure. Yeah. That's I tell you, Steve, it's sure like that, eh? Yeah, it's a nice copy. Looks a little faded, but otherwise, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty decent nick. What's under them? Any more Beatles behind it or what? No. Just some yeah. more Silver Age stuff here. Nice. Silver nice. Age goodness here. Yeah. Uh, Silver Age uh, Kirby Fantastic Four Key first to Tuma, big bad for a uh, Submariner, and I believe it's one of the first Silver Age uh, photo montage covers. Fantastic, yeah, oh, yeah. high grade too, eh? Yeah, good, good looking book. Okay, next up we got Jose, and he's got three more uh, Toronto comic book show pickups. I guess we call these kind of a bargain slash speculation type play. Is that what we're going for here? Yeah, yeah, cheap and dirty, and uh, not a lot of money to be paid, but there's some real good upside on these uh, books actually a couple of books but technically not a couple if you'll see what I mean mm -hmm. uh, so uh, here we're dealing with uh, the vision and the Scarlet Twitch issue number one from uh, November of 1982 uh, the first solo series now uh, I don't know if you heard but Disney did surprise all at the beginning of the year by proclaiming that their innovative live-action series WandaVision would be a Disney Plus streaming channel uh, it would be coming out in 2020 and not in 2021, which was originally announced. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, seven years after their wedding issue in Giant Size Avengers issue number four, we get our first solo series beginning with Vision and Scarlet Witch number one, which reinforces the idea through a famous retcon that Magneto is the father of both Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Now, some, something they're not aware of until issue number four of this four issue limited series. Now, this limited series, four issue one, was followed a few years later by the 12 issue Vision and the Scarlet Witch Volume 2 series. Now, there's two interesting factors in play here as we enter into 2020. First, this is an incredibly cheap book on the market. 
with a CTC 9.8 copy just recently crossing the $100 US barrier. Second, and perhaps more alarming, is that this book has been purchased 11 times in a 9.6 or 9.8 grade since November of 2019. There are only 99 total universal grades that exist, so seeing that percentage changing hands mean that speculation is heating up, likely leading to higher prices soon. Now, this book to me looks like another book to invest in on the upswing before the prices get out of hand, okay? The 49th Overseas Price Paper has only a $5 price guide thing for issues 1 through 4 at the 9.2 grade. Now, again, this is a, a higher grade, I would say a VF near mint, uh, near yeah. mint or a near mint minus kind of thing. You I know, agree. 9, 9, 9, 2. Tougher black cover. 15 bucks would not be a, a bad price for that. But Mike, if you want to open her up. And this is a I, little tricky because it's uh, all attached. Ooh, yeah, you get the two of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like nice. So you got you got three books. No, four. Four. When, on, he, when he actually turns the other oh, one there. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice, so nice. So I got all four issues for, for 15, $15 bucks. Canadian, 375 yeah. Canadian each. What is that? I don't know in U.S. terms. Oh, for, oh, for, from where I come from, we call that a bargoon. Well, bargoon. Let's, are you going to show the last? The I didn't. I didn't see the last. Back, yeah, yeah. I yeah. refer to this. All I will say this. Yeah. I got it from the same dealer. This is the what I refer to the 12 issue uh, volume two series. Yeah. This is the number one issue. Solid cover, as well as me having really solid covers on four, all four covers for the four issue mini series. Oh yeah, it's spectacular. So Twenty five dollars paid yeah. for five books. That's five dollars yeah. Canadian a book. I mean, as far as a, a pretty good deal. Let me I'd see say. the mag. Let me see the Magneto again, Mike. That's yeah, a really. Magneto I love that cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the issue where actually Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver find that Magneto is indeed their father. Cool. Great cool. Plot line. Well, yeah. that's probably going to increase in value. That seems like uh, it's flying under the radar. Which, what would you say? I would say that these are good books to pick up. These are were still dollar bin fodder. Yeah. Now they might have priced them at five or ten bucks. If you yeah. do are picking them up, look for high grade copies. Do not cheap out and get yeah. like a mid grade looking copy. Try to get at least VF, VF near mid copies oh, at for least. Sure. If you go to a con and get them at these prices, you're doing very well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Jose, those are spectacular. Great finds, very nice finds. Hoi hoi, twice. Okay, the next two books are mine. Now, these are pickups from the Sandman. I got them from uh, Sandy at the Retro Rare Collectibles. Now, these, surprisingly, I have most of the Star Wars books from the original series, but I didn't have number uh, three or number four, and that's what I'm about to show you here. Oh, wow. Now, these these cost me for the pair, I think he charged me a hundred. Was it a hundred bucks he charged me? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Now, these aren't just high grade, they are really high grade. I would say they're bordering on near mint. If I was to speculate, I would say they're anywhere between a nine and a 9.4, uh, yeah. point four, the pair of them. And that's why I picked them up, and that's why I spent so much money on them because. I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I am a Star Wars fan. No, really? Yeah. Man, oh. Call me unsurprised that you're having a Star Wars segment on comic books, man. Wow. Yeah, and who'd so have, who'd have thought that was coming? One of those Star Wars guys. And Seriously? these are yeah, these are two of the highest grade books I, I found in a very long time. So when he, I saw them, I couldn't leave them behind. That's like actually turns out I already have a second copy of number four. So I had a copy of number four. So this is actually my second copy. But that's okay. I'll keep them both. Mike, let's see the number four that's underneath that one there. Again, very nice copy, very clean. Again, anywhere between a nine and a, somewhere between a nine and a nine four. If I was to speculate, the corners are perfect, the spine is perfect. And that's uh, a black these, cover, so in yeah. having a nine four, no mean feet on this one. These are flawless oh. books, and I am super excited about owning them. A very, very uh, significant um, contribution to my my Star Wars collection. So gorgeous cover. I yeah. I wow. Actually looks like a major it. omission in your collection. Is it just a yeah. major hole has been filled? Yeah. Surprisingly, I never had issue number three. All these years, I had a reprint of number three, but I never had a real one. So, um, yeah, super stoked about owning them now. And thanks to Sandy at Retro Rare for, uh, for finding me these beautiful little gems. You might have a, a buyer for the number four. If you're no, I'll keep them both. Oh. I've never sold a comic book in my life. I don't. Uh, know. Purist, you. I, I don't extend. Purist. I don't expect I will ever will. But anyways, those are my two. Uh, yeah, those are my two latest pickups. Nice. 
Okay, next up uh, we got Jose, and he's uh, kicking up, the f kick going up on the financial scale uh, here uh, with a book that's uh, slightly more expensive than the ones we've shown thus far. Oh no, well my Star Wars were expensive, but this is um. This well, is a twenty twenty dollar pickup from the okay. Toronto Comic Book Show. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, again, this is Incredible Hulk, one sixty nine, November nineteen seventy three, minor key, and that mm -hmm. it's the first appearance of. By Beast, there nice. on the cover. Yeah. Of course, this issue of the Incredible Hulk features the first appearance of that By Beast, a character with a name almost as hilarious as Man Thing. Yeah, yeah. It was created by the team of artists Herb Trimpey, cover artist, and writer Steve Englehart, mm -hmm. who described it as just another idea for something powerful and impressive enough to fight the Hulk. Yeah. Sometimes, you know. Uh, you know, I'd sometimes, I mean, I might be over critical and just think of numbers and just, you know, sometimes the book, it just appeals to you. I love the Bronze Age. I love popular culture. I have a book, Nick Fury, issue number two with Centaurus on the cover that I call the Bender cover. Yes, this, I'm yes, calling it the to, Homer yeah. cover because what I'm going to do is go like He does kind of look like Homer go, Simpson. <laughs> oh, it's Homer! <laughs> it kind of does, yeah, yeah. Homer, and he's got a skull brother there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, he's got an extra passenger there. I call this the, I've been looking for this book. I didn't want a high, high grade and pay mm -hmm. up for it. But I wanted, I saw the make great copy, which I got. Okay. Uh, condition wise, I find very fine. I would say it's about a seven. So the 40, latest 49th OSG price grade shows uh, 16, 24, and 32 dollars US as the eight, nine, and 9.2 price breaks for this book. Like I said, it paid 20 bucks Canadian or roughly 14 dollars US for this mid high grade copy. About seven, fine, very fine copy. Guide price would price it at 12.50, 14 bucks paid. So right at the uh, fair market value for the yeah. book. Happy to have my homework mm -hmm. cover. Nice. And again, as I've said before, the nice thing about collecting these minor keys is you can pick them up here and there and they don't cost you an arm and a leg. And they're a, they're a great addition to any collection, that's for sure. Hey, I got my Hulk Homer cover. I'm yeah, happy. Yeah. Great book, Jose. Thanks for bringing it in. Oh! <laughs> We've got Jose, who's going to be ending off the night here. And as usual, he's not going to disappoint. Um, and as usual, he's going to treat us to a Golden Age cover. But at the same time, this is an actual, this is a first for our show. This is special. This is not like any book we've shown before. Jose, this is, tell us what is so special about this particular book. So here we have the Texan, issue number eight from June of 1950. St. John Publishing, Canadian edition. Wow. Matt Baker, cover artist. It Our, does say it down there. That's right. right the right first there. time we've ever shown a Matt Baker cover. Yeah. So, for a period in the late 1940s and early 1950s, comic book fans could go to the rack and find fanciful tales about rugged heroes dubbed the bold buckaroo, Mustang Jack, or the female buckskin bell who took on all manner of western baddies like cattle rustlers and frontier gunslingers. Nice. For the price of just 10 cents an issue, the Texan offered up dusty, dangerous escapism for comic readers. Starting in August of 1948, the comic books were published by the Massachusetts-based St. John Publications in print. The publisher also put out other titles like Crime Reporter, Weird Horrors, Diary Secrets, Abbott and Costello, Northwest Mounties, and Amazing Ghost Stories. The stories were fun, escapist, noir stuff for yep. fans of adventure and crime. St. John, John stopped making comics in 1958 and published magazines and, until 1967. The Texan series officially ended in October 1951 with its 15th issue. Uh, by this time, the brand had expanded to include a Native American hero awesomely called Hawkknife. 
the Sioux warrior wore green buckskins and carried a rifle. Now, there were two subsequent issues called the Fighting Texan that came later, giving the Texan overall a total of 17 issues published. Mm -hmm. The comics illustrator and sometimes story creator was, of course, none other than Matt Baker, who is considered to be the first well-known African-American comic book artist. In an industry that was dominated by white men, he stood out but preferred to let his talent speak for itself. Certainly did. Yeah, he also drew Phantom Lady, an early comic book favorite for collectors. Mm -hmm. His titillating depictions of so-called good girls and skimpy clothing influenced generations of artists after him. Now, these good girls, though, were usually tough and self-reliant. Baker died in 1959 at the age of just 37 oh, after suffering terrible. a heart attack. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah, he had suffered a stroke two years before that had really slowed his work output considerably. Mm -hmm. 50 years later, in 2009, he was finally inducted into the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame. Nice. Now, in both, in both Matt Baker's stories in this issue, scalp hunters hide their tracks and the renegades at last raid the pages are heavily worded and the panels are overly crowded. Mm -hmm. Of course, the opening splash page of the first tale, however, is unique in its scale and complexity of layout. A beautiful frontiers woman comes to the aid of a young Indian. Her hand is outstretched, pointing towards the violent scene. Baker lovingly details her dress, increasing the sense of movement. His cover of a violent kidnapping seems a bit busy, but is more than adequately drawn. Specifically, the sensitive portrait of the horse's head in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, Matt Baker absolutely dominates the high-end good girl cover collectible market. And I would like to point out that there are absolutely mm. stellar Western covers out mm. there that rival Baker's best work. Yeah. Currently, Baker is one of the hottest artists in the world of comic book collecting. Collectors are waking up to the fact that comic books with Baker covers are seriously undervalued in the market today. His work published into the late 40s and into the mid 50s is considered by many to be among the finest representations of the human female form. Now. Available on the old eBay right now, there are three low-grade raw copies ranging from a fair good copy at only $20 US to a low mid-grade CDC 5.0 slap copy with the buy it price now of $1,140 US for this issue. Wow. Uh, this is a low-grade copy, I would say about a good two. It's got, I wouldn't say substantial, but it's got significant water uh, damage on it. I but checked. it's a good looking too. And it's a good Damn looking looking too, looking and it's got nothing where the main focal point of the cover is, which yeah. is that the male Indian kidnapping the, the blonde haired damsel in the red dress in the foreground. I will point out that there, there is some rubbing and some looks like a little bit of staining, maybe molding right there. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? These are not serious impediments considering the price point for this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anything Matt Baker is, I think, out of hand price-wise, specifically the more suggestive covers or ones with especially cute babes, and they're yeah. nearly impossible to locate in any kind of nice condition. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the latest 49th Over Street price break for this book shows only 36, 72, 108, 214, 347, and four hundred eighty dollars U.S. for the two, four, six, eight, nine, and nine point two price splits for this issue, mm -hmm. and that's for the regular American issue. Yeah. Again, we wow. get an added complexity or feature of this book in being the, the fact, Canadian edition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now, historically, Canada's had roughly a tenth of the population as our American neighbors so to the south. So, how rare is this? So, you consider this in the heyday of the western genre if it had something above well above two three hundred thousand yeah. even for a smaller publisher that would have been a healthy run yeah. to extrapolate so a tenth of the a tenth of the copies 20 to thirty thousand maximum mm -hmm. you factor in survival rates of maybe five ten percent yeah you start doing a math you start whittling the number until you get mm -hmm. a situation where you might see 
A dozen issues of the American, non-Canadian version dropped, Left, changing yeah. hands in a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, at, as far as you know, really high-grade copies. Forget that. And like I said, as you saw, the price for somebody trying to sell a low mid-grade five, what yeah. they were asking, well over in excess of a thousand dollars. I think looking at the Overstreet, the prices are wildly. The one I said uh, things are undervalued, at least yeah. from Overstreet, mm -hmm. which you cannot fault it for publishing once a year. And yeah. Being, I mean, behind the curve, so to speak, as far as the market demand. Just I think with those prices now. quoted, you could easily um, add 100 or 200 percent to mm -hmm. increase them to somewhere even close to what current fair market values are trading for yeah, as far as the price yeah. today. Yeah. And this was a pickup from the Bat Cave. From the Tyler at the Bat Cave, I flipped him a Golden Age yeah. uh, Archie book. Yeah. Uh, fair market value, I think he had 200 bucks on a Canadian, which yeah. with current exchange rates is about 140. Yeah. For two, it's what, three and a half, four times almost what Guide yeah. would say. Yeah. But like I said, Guide, you'd yeah, have to bump it. it up at least 100, 200 percent to get anywhere close to what I think yeah. market value is mm -hmm. right now. And I just want to mention, now you talked all about this, but the line work, all the way all the way to the back to the well, fire baker was just a genius just yeah, yeah fantastic detailed line work. and paul will be it. showing the insides of the book the the splash page for, for the sure. page where i mentioned in detail yeah, is just show, yeah. fantastic mm -hmm. awesome well that was spectacular jose and i can't think of a better way to end the episode and I think actually this episode was a little bit shorter than we we're used to uh, showing. Yeah, Mike was not able to attend. There's a personal reason. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Mike didn't fine. have his book tonight, but I'm um, glad you're here anyways. Yeah, I showed up. And um, yeah, for sure. Uh, you'll be showing many more books in the future. That's for absolutely, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Don't you worry. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a lot of bagging and boarding right now. Mm -hmm. Catching up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So um, thanks uh, for, again for watching. And if you like... Uh, the show you like the like what we sh you sh we showed tonight leave a comment we'll always respond sometimes it may take us a couple weeks <laughs> or a week you're Depending. recently on vacation so yeah, that, so yeah but we will definitely get to it that's for sure and we will see you next time hoy hoy happy collecting special guest mike yes yes